Now, ultra-long haul travel is a new and emerging form of travel, initially originating from prop liners of the early 40s until the early jets of the 60s, but now this is regaining its popularity. Now, this is obvious mostly from the new Qantas project, Sunrise, looking to make flights of up to 20 hours. Now, ultra-long haul travel originated in the early 30s and 40s, when a need for long-distance aircraft was required and airlines were starting to phase out their multi-stop trips. Now, while these flights didn't actually travel a very remarkable distance, they took a very long time to complete their routes. The first of these was part of Qantas' Double Sunrise project, which was done to re-establish the Australia to Britain airlinks, which were lost due to the fall of Singapore. They achieved this by connecting major Australian cities to Sri Lanka, where they would then connect onto BOAC services to London. Now, this of course resulted in a flight which still remains as one of the longest flights, the path to Sri Lanka route. This took an average of 33 hours and was flown by the PBY Catalina. This explains why the project was named Double Sunrise as the passengers got to experience two sunrises while on flight. Now, after the end of this route, there was a bit of a gap in ultra-long haul flights. Most airlines had resorted to operating leftover aircraft from World War II such as the DC-3s and flying many stops to reach their long distances. However, on the 1st of October 1957, ultra-long-haul flights began their comeback with the launch of TWA service from London to San Francisco. Now, this flight took 23 hours and it was operated by the Lockheed Starliner with a distance of 8,640 kilometers. After this, as airlines began to become more efficient, ultra-long-haul travel was briefly a reality again, with many common routes being operated by super constellations and the like. Once again, all good things must come to an end, and this time, it was with the prop age. Now, while this caused a revolution in ticket fares and speed, it also caused the demise in people wanting to travel long distances on one flight as it was seen as slower and more uncomfortable. And now we come to the present day. In the early 2000s, airlines decided that because of rising fuel prices and falling airfares, they were going to need more efficient, long-haul airliners to keep up with the market. This has spawned a new era of ultra-efficient, ultra-long-haul travel. Now, this type of travel began with aircraft such as the Airbus A340 and the Boeing 777. The first of these routes began on March 2001, with Continental Airlines starting a service direct from Newark to Hong Kong, which made this the first flight since the dawn of the jet age to exceed 16 hours. Now, similar examples of ultra-efficient, ultra-long-haul flights include the Qatar Airways service from Doha to Auckland and the Emirates service from Dubai to Auckland. And very soon, we'll be seeing the Singapore Airlines service from Singapore to Newark, which will be the longest flight in the world. Now, with Project Sunrise coming, could we see more direct flights from Australia to Europe? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and consider subscribing and liking for more aviation videos.